Have you ever wondered how you can clean up your life so you feel that you're living a virtuous life? That's what we'll talk about today. Search others for their virtue and thyself for vices. Benjamin Franklin. Today we're going to talk about the book, Benjamin Franklin's Book of Virtues by Benjamin Franklin. And we'll talk a little bit about how it impacted Benjamin Franklin's life and how it impacted other people's lives. I'm always kind of interested how people from the past develop these systems in their lives that are so applicable to our world today. We may think of people living in the past as being rudimentary or not thinking things out, but it's entirely not true. So even when you look back at history and you look back at some of their interesting statements of virtue or ways to live life, they're sophisticated, they're advanced, and they're interesting. Ben Franklin did this system because he wanted to figure out how people could reinvent themselves in the best possible light and really take a look at their own behaviors so that they can be better in how they act towards other human beings and how they really improve themselves to be better citizens, better human beings. As Franklin sat down and looked at all these different types of virtues, he realized that he was falling short in a number of them. And he came up with 12 ideas about how he could do better. Then eventually he picked 13 because it divided evenly into four when you pick 52 weeks so that he could work on a particular virtue at a time, work on it for a week, and then move on to the next thing and try to fix what's wrong every time you encounter this virtue. So every 13 weeks, he would go through the process again of looking at these virtues. He also charted his progress, and I'll put a diagram of his chart in my show notes, and shared his ideas with other people. He wanted a system that was trackable, a way that he could hold himself accountable to these virtues that he developed himself. And what he found is that once he had this list and he had his tracking system, that he was able to do the system and he desired the change once he called out the virtues he did want to change. And in his book, he talks about how they build on each other, how he would experiment with them. And so this was really a life experiment in making himself better. He asked his friends about what his faults were, too, because he wanted this to be an honest reflection of the things he needed to work on. And he said that a friend told him that humility, he had to be cautious about how he was coming off to others about his own pride. It's one thing to go around and point your finger and say that person could be better or this person could be better. But instead, he looked at it as fixing himself and working on his own shortcomings. There was an old story about how a man prayed to God, how can we be better people? And God told him, draw a circle around yourself and start there. Meaning that if you want to have a better population of people around you, you start with yourself and that's how you get there. There was a fellow back in 2018 called David G. Allen, and he wrote an article for CNN about how he tried to pursue Ben Franklin's path of virtues, and he tried it for a long time. This uh, writer for CNN started his own notebook. He wrote down the definitions of the 13 virtues his own way. You know, Benjamin Franklin obviously had his definitions of those words, but he decided that he wanted to modernize or at least personalize what the definitions of those virtues are. So let's compare that to what Benjamin Franklin came up with. Benjamin Franklin decided that his project was going to be temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. So again, that humility one coming from his friend. The CNN writer decided that his final list was going to be friendliness, erudition, frugality, flexibility, civic duty, introspection, patience, spirituality, creativity, mindfulness, healthfulness. 
He said that he picked two of them from Franklin's list, but the rest were his own. So he followed that same system. One week he worked on one item. He said, for example, when he worked on friendliness, he called a friend every day to become more friendly. Another week, for morality, he decided to go vegan. And for your addition, he decided that he would learn something new or learn something new about himself that he didn't know already. So he did this project for a really long time. He decided to keep up his life of experiment after that and try different experiments, but he found that it was really beneficial to himself. He said that after 10 years, he stopped tracking his own 13 virtues, and now he's perfect, except for humility, he supposes. But he said that the reason he walked away from this was not because it wasn't effective, because it was effective, and he felt like he could be solid in most of those things. He said that Franklin didn't reach his goal either. It wasn't perfect. He says that you can have your own wisdom project and come up with your own ideas, your own virtues, your own 13 virtues that you work on one per week, four times a year, and see if you can get better at them. He says that he can't recommend this experiment enough as long as you really try to do it. Franklin wrote this particular piece at the age of 20 in 1726. And he said that he practiced most of it for the rest of his life. He said that the virtues are temperance, do not eat to dullness, do not drink to elevation, silence, speak not but what may benefit others or yourself, avoid trifling conversations, order, let all things have their place and let each part of your business have its time. So it's order in what you do and what stuff you have. Resolution. Resolve to perform what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. So resolve to do the things you should do and then do them. Frugality. Make no expense, but do good for others or yourself. Waste nothing. Industry. Lose no time. Always be employed in something useful and cut off unnecessary actions. Sounds like that book essentialism. Take out the things that don't matter and do the things that are really important. Sincerity, use no hurtful deceit. Think innocently, justly, and if you speak, speak accordingly. I think that sincerity one is probably my favorite. Justice, wrong none by doing injuries, admitting the benefits that are your duty. Cleanliness, tolerate no uncleanliness in your body clothes, or habitation. Tranquility. Be not disturbed at the trifles or accidents common or avoidable. So just don't get so ruffled all the time. You know, people make mistakes. Chastity. Rarely use venery but for health or offspring. Never to dullness, weakness, or injury of your own or another's peace or reputation. Humility. Imitate Jesus and Socrates. And again, that was his last one, and that's the one he struggled with the most. So he said that his original habit was frugality because he grew up that way. His father taught him to be frugal, and so he was very good at that. He considered industry as a means of obtaining wealth or even admiration or position in the world, so he thought that one was very important. He saw this quote about a man who is diligent in his calling shall stand before kings. And what he said was interesting in the end is he stood before five kings and even had dinner with the king of Denmark once. So it was his industry that led him to be in the presence of high-positioned people. And he said while he often knew what the right and wrong thing was to do, he found it hard to actually do those things. It's weird because you know what you want to do, whether it's dieting or exercising or saving money, yet the action is always the hardest part of it. So he said that sometimes he just wasn't paying attention. Sometimes something took him by surprise and he would fail at a particular habit he was trying to accomplish. So just knowing them isn't good enough to actually getting them done. So he put them in a particular order, and just to give you a quick example, is that he decided that temperance 
would be the first one because that was going to keep him out of trouble. And then silence was the second place item that he had. And then came order. And being orderly would allow him to have more time to do his other projects and his other virtues. Resolution would be the habit that would keep him stuck to his proper virtues, his proper actions. And by being frugal and having industry, he would stay out of debt. He would have the money and the ability to accomplish the things he wanted to accomplish. And having that frugality and industry would help him with sincerity and justice and the rest of them. And so he really wanted to stack these in such a way that they benefited the next thing. He said that when looking at this, he used Pythagoras in the golden verses so that he could examine what would become necessary to do. He then came up with this grid that was every day of the week and then each of the virtues. And then he would try to check them off on how he did for each of those particular pieces. Did he accomplish on any given day any of those types of habits he was trying to press forward with? And remember, he was only going to work on one for a week, but that didn't mean that he didn't expect that at some times he would get there anyway, even if he wasn't working on that particular virtue. Then he had a diary where it listed every hour that he was awake and he went through this process. So he would get up in the morning, he would clean himself, he would address powerful goodness, which we won't talk about in this particular podcast. And he would look at the day's business, trying to figure out what it was he was supposed to do. We've talked about day planning before. Then he would start studying whatever it is he was looking into, and he breakfast. He would ask himself a question of the day. What good shall I do this day? That was after he got done with his morning routine. Then he would work, he would read, or look over his counts and eat lunch. In the afternoon, he would work again. In the evening, he would put away all the things. He'd eat supper, listen to some music, have some great conversation, and examine the day. And his evening question was, what good have I done today? Then nighttime would come and he'd go to sleep. It was really a very modern take at what a daily practice looks like. I love the questions asking at the beginning of the day, what good shall I do today? And at the end, reflecting on it. What good have I done today? Really powerful stuff. So I was really impressed by how not only introspective this was, but how it was meant for action, how it was meant to do things, not just reflect on things. And he talks about this story where basically this person wanted the perfect acts, but after he saw how much work went into building such a perfect acts, that when the Blacksmith offered him an axe that was pretty darn good. He decided that he liked that axe best anyway. And the idea behind it is not about giving up on things, not about lacking perfection in your virtues or your behaviors, but realizing at some point that it's good enough to get there, to to get those items to where they're pretty darn good as compared to looking for perfection in everything that you do. But in reflection at the end of his life and after the time that he spent on this, he said that he never really achieved perfection. No matter how hard he tried to get it, he wanted to obtain it, but he fell short. But he realized that even just going through the practice of trying to attain these virtues made him a better person. And he said, quote, a happier man than I otherwise should have been had I not attempted it. So for people who try to get at things, to be perfect, to reach excellence, he said sometimes just doing the practice is all it takes for you to be a better person and to be a happier person. And he said in the end that vicious actions are not hurtful because they're forbidden, but they're forbidden because they're hurtful. So he came up with these virtues and these bans on certain activities in his own life, not because they should be forbidden, but because they were hurtful, and that makes them something that should be forbidden in his own life. He said that after his practice, I had the satisfaction of seeing them diminish, 
the bad activities he was trying to solve with his virtues. And in the end, too, he said that humility got on his list because someone else suggested it to him, but that became the hardest one. And he said he couldn't, quote, boast on much success in acquiring reality in this virtue. But he said he did pretty good, and he worked his way into a lot of improvements. And what he realized that as soon as he started making advancements in humility, he realized that he was treating other people better, he was listening to other people better, and that when he gave people respect through humility, he found out that, first of all, it was less embarrassing if he did make a mistake because he was more humble about it. And when he happened to be right, people listened to him more because he did his discussions in such a humble way, it helped other people hear his opinion. So while it wasn't perfect, it worked out pretty well for him, and he felt that he had some improvements. And the problem you're trying to solve with humility is pride. And he said, quote, for even I could conceive that I completely overcome it. I should probably be proud of my humility. There's the old Benjamin Franklin wit. He was always such a good writer because he was such a funny human being. I like this system. I thought it was really interesting. And again, it feels very modern. Half the books that we talk about, even in this podcast, talk about many of these things, whether it comes to treating other people well whether it comes to being industrious or getting rid of the things in your life that you're trying not to do, I think it was really good. And I think his routine and his diary, also very good. My challenge to you is either take Benjamin Franklin's 13 Virtues or David Gallen's 13 Virtues that he did in the column. I'll post a link to that article so you can look at it yourself and come up with your 13 virtues that you would like to tackle, let's say for just a year, to see if you could record and work on one of them each week, four times a year, to see if you can gain some traction on it. You want to make sure that the challenge is worthwhile. You know, don't say, and I vow to play more video games, or I vow to watch more TV. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself on the things that will make you a better person, things that maybe have nagged on you your whole life. Or, again, if someone else has an opinion about what virtues you should work on, something that maybe is nagging other people about you, and come up with a serious list. Write them down and create a grid so that you can track on any given day how well you tackled your 13 virtues. And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from the cartoon The Flintstones. Where are we this time? Let's ask that man over there. Uh, pardon me, sir, but uh, could you tell us where we are? Certainly, friend. You're in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia? The city of brotherly love? Oh, that's right, that's right. Oh, pardon me for yawning. I got in rather late last night. Oh, that's not good. You know, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. You don't say. That's very interesting. Perhaps I'd better write that down. Here, uh, would you mind holding my kite? Oh, and would you hold my apple? I eat lots of apples. You know what they say. An apple a day keeps the doctor on his toes. It keeps him away, too. By George, that's clever. I'd better write that down, too. Uh, this is quite a kite you have here, mister. Where did you buy it? Oh, I didn't buy it. I made it myself. A penny saved is a penny stashed away, you know. You might even say it was a penny earned. Ooh, <laughs> that's even better. I'll write that down, too. See, that's why a podcast is so important, because it teaches you in-depth things, like the fact that Wilma Flintstone helped Ben Franklin come up with all his platitudes. And I bet she came up with the 12 virtues, too. Heck, she might have even been the friend who told him to get some humility. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate the fact that you're listening. If you have anything you want to say to me, I'm Jill at smallstepspod.com. And you can reach me on Twitter and Instagram also. My website, smallstepspod.com, has everything else. And tell your friends that they can tackle virtues in their lives 
so that they're happier and a better citizen, a better human being, using small steps.